In this week's episode, I 3D print a custom test lead holder from my electronics workbench. I'll show you how I did it on this week's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. I did a little shopping and found I could buy one of these on Amazon for just under $12, but I figured I could print it for less than a buck and have it right now, so why not print it? Fortunately, I found this one from user The Hands on Thingiverse, and he already had this designed and ready to go for an eight, a 6 slot, a 9 slot, and a 12 slot unit. But I wanted a custom size, and it turns out he also has this available in Customizer right on Thingiverse, where you can do different settings and make your own. Like the back wall here, if I wanted to change it from 32 millimeters to 25, it changes it. But I like the 32, so I'll put it back. And the thickness, 2 millimeters, seemed like that's okay. Depth was good. The radius of the fillet at the back was good. Arm thickness, I was fine. The width, now this became critical. 12 millimeter width and then the 45 degrees is the tip at the end and then the angled length. That's just the, the tips to the end to hold it. But the uh, slot width was only 7. So that plus the 12 arm width it was a little difficult to calculate where if I just changed it to 8 now every arm plus the slot is 20 millimeters wide so I could just count it out and then figure out what would fit within the space that I had and I figured out that I could add one more slot to this and still fit within the space so I went down to the slot count changed it from 9 to 10 and now I had modified this thing and it's customized to the way I want it and everything else was pretty much stock so I was good with it, so I clicked on create this thing, and there you can give it a new name, which I did. I just named it uh, Wire Organizer, and then I, I didn't, wasn't ready to publish this thing, but I said create this thing, and then I go to the queue. Now, I did this several times in making this video, but here's how it works. You just wait for it to process, and once it's done, it tells you it's done, <laughs> and then you can go to view the thing, and it takes you to a page, where the design is and from there you can just download it just like a normal Thingiverse file but this one is my customized version so I downloaded it and then entered it into Simplify 3D and here it is on the CR10 bed platform within Simplify 3D and this thing looked really good and it looks really easy to print so I went into the edit process my CR10 profile 30% fill is all I'm going to use 0.3 layer height which prints fine in a CR10 three top and bottom layers three perimeter shells 30% infill no support temperature was 40 degrees on the bed 215 in the PLA uh, filament cooling was enabled and I'm printing as fast at 80 millimeters per second I click prepare to print everything looks good there's no holes or nothing so I sent it to the CR10 and here's a time lapse of it printing. It stuck to the bed good. Glue on the glass works great for me. And when it was done, the print looked fantastic. And it was clean, there was no stringing. This thing was ready to hang. And this turned out to be the perfect spot to hang the test leads. So here's the bracket that I 3D printed. Three screws, I've got the first center screw kind of in place. I started a pilot hole. The idea, I'm gonna screw that in and from there, I can level it and then shoot the other two screws. Now, what I'm going to hang there are these. They're test leads, and I've got a bunch of these. This is a banana jack style, and this is great for, like, plugging into power supplies or plugging into a meter or even plugging into each other and extend out. So these are very, very handy. Now, these are not cheap. These are Pomona. I've had some of these for over 30 years, but they still work because they're so strong. And then I've got another set that have that same banana jack and on the other end have these spring clips. So it's a little spring arm that comes out, that way you can clip it to the electronics. i got a couple of those in my meter where it's a banana jack on one end and the spring clip on the other so I can clip on and measure the voltage. So that's very, very handy. And then some of i got two, two spring clips on both ends. So it's a combination. So i got a bunch of these guys I need to hang and they're pretty long. So they'll hang right here from this rack. So now I just need to install this, and then I can start installing and hanging the wires. So I'm going to shoot the center screw, and then I'll level. So I'll just shoot this guy. 
Now this wall is like drywall and drywall and drywall. So just the drywall screw will go in. I don't have to do any inserts or nothing. And there's not a lot of weight on this thing, so I don't have to worry about it being pulled too hard. But once I get that in place, now I can put the level on here. Now it's level. That was pretty close. And then I'll just shoot two more screws and start hanging the wires. Here's the first batch of wires I gotta hang. This is just the first batch. I know I've got more throughout the shop, so as time goes on, I'll hang them here. But time to hang the wires. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's plenty strong enough, and it works great for holding the leads. And this is a great location that would have been used otherwise. So if you like this type of project, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up over here. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month, the Patreon, and if nothing else, please subscribe. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next week on Filament Friday.